Hello and welcome back to my show. Today we'll be doing some animation techniques in Fuse. Um, it was something brought up by one of people on my product team, I think. They switch teams sometimes, so I don't necessarily know which team they're on. And what we need to do is a, an animation example. We There's a lot of requests for like, how do I do this animation? How do I do this animation? And we'd like to have canned examples for a lot of these. So what I'd like to do in this show is start building the example program that actually shows how all these work. We're going to start relatively simple, just showing simple animations, <clears throat> and then building up the program to ultimately generate the code you need to actually just copy and paste, show you how to create a reusable module, and how to just plug these into other programs. And so that's what my intent to doing is today. So just close this off. <clears throat> and this is a very simple base program is set up. It's, I, I'm starting to do this more often now. I set up the basic one just because it's no fun watching me struggle with command instead of the first code. And we have a simple animation and I was just testing keyframes. It just goes to the right and comes back. Not very exciting and I didn't want something exciting. I was testing something very particular. So let's go to Sublime and see what this looks like. Uh, I have the wrong file open. We're going to open a different one. Mm -hmm up one level. I have all these files and demos sitting around. I'm trying to keep them organized, but you know, the more you try to organize, the more directories you have, and it's usually working out. Animation Explorer is what I want. And so what we'll do is we have a main view, it's a basic one. In this, the setup the demo program, what we want is we want to have a simple box at the top, maybe we'll add something else later, and we want to have a list of animations at the bottom <clears throat> and a list of parameters for them. And in this show, I probably won't get to adding too many parameters, but let's just start creating some of the basic animations we might have, and I'll show you a few techniques on how to do them. Now, the simple one here, the reason I did it in advance is just so I had the keyframe syntax here available. It's not so exciting, so we're just going to ignore that one for a second. And what's the first one we might want to have is, I don't know, I can't remember, I didn't even name the show, I think it's called Bulse, Bounce or Pulse, but let's do a Pulse one. And I'm going to put these all as timelines so we can trigger them remotely. This is a very common approach, and it also lends for being componentized later. You could put this on another one. And what is a pulse? It's mainly a scale. And it's a, we're going to make it a simple scale first. How big do we want it to go? Let's do a scale of 1.3. And let's do duration of 0 0.3. And down here, we're going to create a button. And we'll call it pulse. And strangely, and I just realized now that we have a function called pulse, and this actually triggers a timeline. So we say pulse put button. Okay, and that should be enough to give us our pulse. And except it didn't reload it for some reason. There we go. Oh, I have to. Maybe it doesn't do it in the background. I'll figure it out. <clears throat> and so that's a it's a bit of simple pulse. And you notice it's not so exciting right now because the default for scale is linear. All the easings in the system are simply linear. And so the easiest approach is we say easing. Which easing do we want instead? Um, so let's choose cubic in out. This is probably not the correct one we want for a pulse, but let's try it anyways. That's more of like a grow and shrink. A pulse should be a bit quicker. So, I can't remember the order of things. We have a... That's exactly the opposite way. Okay, so that's a very basic pulse. And actually, that looks like, you know, the pulse of, say, a heartbeat or something. And that's, that's kind of what we want, a cubic in, in this case. And, you know, I don't know if we actually have a listing on here. We have all the easings. But actually, I don't know if we have visual references for them. What I end up doing is I am going to, where is it, easings.net. You need to know my history. 
Um, I actually find, this is from the CSS ones, but I find it really helpful. And I actually made a program in Fuse a long time ago, which did the same display, but obviously a program is not a great way to get into a web program. So these easings work fine. And you can see cubic in here, cubic, it's in cubic. The naming's slightly different on the site, but once you get used to the naming, it'll be quick figure enough to figure it out. So here's in cubic, you notice the time goes up like that. And these are mainly Bezier curves. They have a few more, some of these are not Beziers. So maybe you want something like this one instead. Ease in out elastic or ease out bounce could possibly be it. Ease bounce out then is another possible one you might want for a pulse. Let's see what that looks like. That looks more like a shaking thing, but let's just go back to cubic in. So that's a, that's a very basic one, and you know, it, it's not... With simple easing, there's only so much you can do. And if you notice, and by simple easing, I mean this easing here only supports our standard ones. It has bouncing. We have another easing approach Let's see if I can find one of Bezier easing. I'm trying to think of what we can make with this thing. Cubic Bezier easing. Unfortunately, this one only supports four control points, but we're going to use it anyways. And I'm going to use the exact one they have in here and see what it does. And then we'll go back to creating a specific one. Actually, so I'm going to have all these basic techniques here lined up, and we'll show how to combine them in a second. And. You know what, scaling may not be good, so let's see what happens with this exact example here. Oh, wrong key again. Okay, and this as easing, um, these can be made global as well, I believe. I haven't tried it yet. It's the same as specifying an easing, except it's a custom one. We're using these control points and we need to specify what's the name of this one. We're going to say custom easing and we'll create a button for it down here. Button text equals custom easing. Now you can always see we're already starting to do a bit of repetition down here and I'll probably look at another show not about animation, how to get rid of that, because that's not an animation topic, but we can definitely help get rid of that a bit later. And let's see what we have now, custom easing. Okay. So this uses these control points here. And it may seem a little weird that the control points are, I think they're, yeah. It's a, we're moving a one dimension which makes the control points weird, so let's put both dimensions on there and see how it works with both of them. Um, what do you mean it doesn't want to find it? Ah, oh, sorry. Apparently some of them don't have X, Y divined. I thought I went through and did most of them once, but maybe not. And Okay, and so you can see it does both directions and We'll go to back to easing again, just to X. So that's the basic options we have. And the last one here is the simple one, as I showed you. This is the keyframe one. And the purpose of the keyframes is to show that you, you can specify custom keyframes. And there's two interpolation modes, linear and smooth. Smooth usually looks better. And I'm gonna exaggerate this time even more so you can clearly see the difference, actually not there. Let's see, let's see what happens here. So you notice there's a very slow part at the start when it slowly moves, then it goes faster and it comes down. And this is with the keyframes and we can even make the keyframe overshoot. In the smooth, this is gonna create bouncing because it, it does it this way and then it goes backwards as well. Okay, and that's that's to be expected. 
and it's because we have such a side, short time, it's going to dig, it's going to bounce a little bit, and the smoothing does that. Whereas if you do linear, you'll see a different approach. Okay, it's, it still bounces, but a little bit less. And, and this sets up the keyframe, the basic easing and the custom easing. These set up the very simple approach you can do the animation. But let's try to make something that's a little bit more exciting right now. Um, which one do we actually call for the show? Let's, let's, let's do a bounce. Let's try to make this thing bounce. Now, if you want to think of bounce as basically jumping up and down, it's not going to be too exciting, but that's what it'll be. Um, I just, excuse me, just one second. Sorry about that. Now, again, if, if you have questions of pro process, please ask. That's why we do it interactive, in case you have anything to ask. Um, but let's make a bounce. How long does bounce take? Let's say 0 0.5. I'm going to start at the worst. I'm going to say minus. How high should it bounce? And, you know, let's make a relative. Let's not worry about sizes for a moment. Let's actually just take fixed amounts. We can worry about sizes later. You can make it relative to the thing, and we'll just make it this way for now. It simplifies the calculations. And again, we'll copy and paste this bit here. And again, this pulse, what it does is it takes a timeline and plays it forward and plays it backwards. And that's good. We might not want that for bounce, but let's see that first. And so with the bounce, we have our basic bounce set up. And sure, that goes up and down, but that doesn't really look too much like bouncing now, does it? Nobody wants to just see it go up and down. That's not that much fun. So let's see who can actually make it bounce. Let's assume this is a rubbery object, and we actually want to compress this a little bit first. And you know, So we actually want to delay this first, delay, and we want to squish this down a little bit first and make it fatter as though something was pressing on the top. So we're going to scale X to be 1.3 and Y equals, say, 0 0.8. Squish it. I'm just generally mess guessing these numbers. I'm sure we could physically come up with them even better. but And we're going to do duration equals. We want it to squish really fast. And then you'll see the problem with this right away, though. Okay, so now when we go bounce, you get the squishiness, but we want it to go back. And so now we're going to use a keyframe instead because this doesn't exist the whole time. So we're going to say keyframe x equals 1.3, y equals 0 0.8. And we want this to happen at time 0 0.1, or rather, let's say time delta. We'll use deltas instead of absolute times because sometimes they're easier. And we take this off here. And now we're going to put a second keyframe. We're going to make it go back to its standard one. Back to Y1, and it's, this will be at time delta another 0 0.1. Um, actually, because I'm going to use the move here, yeah, actually, let's just do move the same way. Let's do move with this keyframe as well. Keyframe Y equals 0, time delta equals 0 0.2. The reason I'm doing this is that in the moment it's squishing, I don't want anything to happen with the motion. I want it to just squish. And then afterwards, time delta, we're going to say, OK, 0 0.5. Then we'll make it bounce up. After it's done squishing, this is going to be very rudimentary at first, but let's see what happens. Uh, let's see what happens if I make an error. Keyframe, keyframe, uh, one of them is a small k. Okay. Now you notice a couple problems here. 
First off, it plays in both directions, which you may not want to do. So let's add another keyframe here. Let's let it go back to the bottom. Y equals zero, time delta equals 0 0.4. Let's make it fall slightly faster. We probably don't want to do that. And we, but this comes back, you notice now, we have come back to the starting position already. We don't need to play this in reverse. So let's change the pulse to something called pulse forward. This plays the timeline in just one direction. And it, so this way, and you notice it, there is no back animation now. We're fully taking care of it. And we're going to slow this down because first of all, you can't see the problem that I want to fix. Um, I can see it here, but at 30 frames per second, which I'm broadcasting, you probably don't see it as clearly, but you probably can. And all right, I'm going to exaggerate this a lot because we really want to see the problem here. We really want to see the thing as it becomes an issue. All right, something's wrong here. This is weird, something's going wrong with the uh, keyframe here. Why is it going so fast? Let's exaggerate, that should be clear to see. Hmm, um, I wonder because it's scale, this might be an issue. Maybe there's an issue with the starting point. Something I'd have to fix, but scale, it might be starting at zero. Okay, so this is something I have to fix. Can I put a to do here? I'm not sure, uncertain, certain if required. And our keyframes, I, I think there's a good reason here is because the move the keyframes, they can start at zero. Everything else starts at zero, but scale, if you initialize to zero, you're gonna get a very bad number. And the keyframe itself probably can't know the default value scale here. I'm pretty sure I can fix this, but this isn't something that's gonna be a quick fix. It, it requires a bit more depth. I'm surprised I haven't noticed it before. So now you notice the bounce, it slowly squishes and comes up. Except you notice, it doesn't squish down. We want to make it look like something squishing down on the object. And so it pounces back up. And so how could we actually do that? The one option we can do here is let's align this to the bottom first of all. Let's say the anchor is at 50% comma 100%. This is where it positions itself in the display. You'll notice it shift up a bit. So instead the center, the bottom's on the center now. And now we're gonna set the transform origin to be the anchor. So now when we bounce, okay. You notice it, it squishes down along that line now. We might wanna, maybe we should add an extra little line here just so you can see that it's really actually doing that. Let's do a rectangle height equals two. Color equals, a, yeah, let's make it really dark so we can see it. Alignment equals center. And we'll set the anchor to be at 50% comma 0%, so it's just below the other one. And now we should have a little line below it. We probably don't have a width. Vertical center. So this should make it clear. I just wanted to see for the bounce one. So now you can see the bounce clearly press against the line and then bounce up. Okay. Now, this may not be too satisfying, but it's, it's slowly looking a bit more like a bounce. And you can play with these values a long time. And these are all linear right now, and these are smooth. So let's make these smooth. Keyframe interpolation is smooth. Just for that one, we'll leave the move as is. And you notice there's a weird delay now that we actually probably want this to start hopping. It's gonna start hopping off the ground 
slightly before the bounce is done. So let's move the bounce down a little bit and set this to line to start slightly beforehand. And the initial bounce should be a bit more explosive. So let's make it go fast and it's gonna hover in the sky and then drop back down. Again, this is a bit unrealistic. It should fall at the same speed it went up, but you know, we don't care about that here. Oh wait, we have even more of a problem now. All right, um, what does it want there? Why is it complaining about that? Why is it so slow? You know, I can test the theory here. I haven't worked with keyframes in a long time. Maybe they're supposed to start at zero. <laughs> that would make sense. You want to specify where it is at zero, but. I think that's the issue. Which is really. I can check that one too. I can check. Maybe we just never never tested it. Assuming, I'm assuming it'll start at time zero. Or maybe time delta zero doesn't work that way. Oh, now what's the problem? Um, hmm. Well, this isn't working as well as I thought. Why would this one be making a difference? Sorry, I was probably to play with the bounce. This one actually looks correct now. You know, I think I have a reload issue here. Let's ignore that. I want to see something. I think that might have just been a reload issue. Again, sometimes I don't press save because I gotta explain as always that I don't typically use the Mac keyboard. And so the control save is two different buttons, one for the Linux and one for Mac, and so I pressed the wrong button. It's both S, but on this keyboard is the Windows is the control, and otherwise it's control. Okay, nonetheless, we have that. And you can tweak this even a little bit more, but this creates a basic bounce for us. But when we bounce up, you notice it also has a hard ceiling. By hard ceiling, I mean when you bounce, you can see when it gets to the top, it goes thuk. It bounces, like it's hit a wall. So this is why we have key tamer percolation equals smooth. And this does a Bezier smoothing on it. And that makes it look more like a bounce. Okay, except this is where we want to make it more fun. When we stretch this, when we squish this, we actually want it to overcompensate just slightly to get a little bit more of a bounce. Oops, again, pressed the wrong key. And now go back to 1. This is 1.1. And make it very, very short before it goes. So let's see how we get a bounce out of this. Whoop. And you can see it bounce up then. Whoop. It ever so slightly bounces in and it squishes back out in the top like it overcompensates. So that gives us our bounce. So this actually looks like the ball is somewhat bouncing now. I mean, <laughs> sorry, it's a box. It looks like a rubbery box. And we have a little bounce. And using keyframes, you can adjust us even more and more and more, however much you want to do that. Um, I'm going to remove the bottom, or should we leave the bottom line there? And the issue is that we had this anchor here. We had to, if you want to bounce in the bottom, you have to position the anchor to the bottom of the image. The feature we're probably missing here is that what I'd actually like to do, and this actually is quite difficult internally to accomplish, which is probably why we haven't done it yet, is we want this scale in move, we want them both to have their own transform origin relative to the object, because we don't want to have to specify the object itself. In general, it works though, because in general, you don't transform the same object too many different ways, but it'd be nice to just have it that way. But for now, we'll have it bouncing on the bottom. And I'll look at a way to do that for next time. So we have this bounce, and that gives us a very basic one. Okay. 
Now, the next one that comes up a lot is, and it's going to be a different technique, is what if you want to make something shake? Okay? This is, we want to shake something. And so we have bounce. If there's any questions about bounce, ask about bounce. Yummy, bounce. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to put bounce to the top. I'm going to put a separator here between our junk tests. Just get those out of the way. And now I want to put another one. And what do we want to do in this one? We want to make a shake now. It will say shake. And I'm going to say the exact same structure here. Now, what does shaking actually mean? It means moving back and forth really fast. But we don't really have an animator that does that. I mean, you can actually use a bunch of keyframes, but if you want to shift this thing back and forth like 30, 40 times, that's a lot of keyframes you're going to have to do. So instead, we're going to do something slightly different. We're going to add a translation to the object itself. Translation y equals 0, ux name equals shake trans. And let me show you how this works first of all. In the timeline, what we'll do instead is we'll say shake trans.x equals 100 and duration equals 1. This is just make it very clear first what's happening. And we're pulsing it forward as well. We should probably change that to make it the uh, pulse. Uh, yeah, just pulse. So what I set up here is I have, I have this translation. And for a shake, this isn't very clear. I mean, if I use a regular change and I'm just changing it from zero to 100, you could just as easily put a move in here. And this is exactly what a move does. This move up here is basically the same as this translation set up down here. And so let me just highlight that stuff so we can see it very clearly. Right? It's, these are very similar to a move. And oh, this silly program doesn't like working on me. Okay. I'll give, give, give it up. Okay. Um, but the reason I'm not using a move, so this is equivalent to a move right now. The reason I'm not using a move because I want to use this other animator called cycle. And it uses this syntax. Shake, its target is shake trans.x. In the low, I'm going to make it say minus 20. And the high is 20. But cycle has a problem. Nothing's going to happen. Why? Because it doesn't have a duration. So, there's another way to do this. Nothing. Duration equals 1. This animator literally does nothing except the extends the timeline. And cycle is just going to keep repeating itself for that whole duration. Okay. So that's not shaking it. That's just shuffling back and forth and then it plays backwards. So we have something called frequency. And we're going to make this go really fast. How many times per second? Let's make it go 10. And so that makes a shaking signal. Um, I apologize if you 30 frames per second um, on the show that you're actually just seeing blurriness. But in 60 frames per second, you can actually see it shake. And that gives you a shaking animation by using cycle. And this is a back and forth shake. <clears throat> and you may want to extend this, change the distance to make it a little bit less. The exaggeration is kind of fun. And, but now we also have a Y. Why not shake Y as well? And we're going to do Y um, the same distance. But watch what happens if I leave the exact same frequency. Um, nothing now. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Um, okay, It just goes diagonally because X and Y are changing at the exact same rate. There are two ways to fix this. You can either change the ranges, but it's not going to work, or we change the frequency. Now the frequencies are good, and we can change the say for 7. 
Now this still has cycles in it, so whenever I create frequencies that are not meant to line up, I like giving them weird fractions, and especially things that end in odd numbers or even numbers, or I mean odd numbers or, or prime, variants of prime, because the chance for this to enter a cycle is very, very low. It'll take a long time, and that'll keep them off sync. So now when we shake it, it just it looks random, even though it's not. This basically goes randomly. Okay, and so that's how we shake it. Now we can shake it, we can also bounce it at the same time, but you don't really see the effect. So you can bounce it and shake it at the top. So bounce it and shake it. <laughs> so these both apply at the same time. Now this little setup here, try the highlighter again. Let's see if this thing actually works this time. <laughs> and it failed on me again. Wow, I'm getting kind of annoyed at this program. It was working. They had a demo program, and there's like part of the screen missing. <laughs> very, very curious. Um, so I bought this program. I thought it was really fun. It was working great, and it stopped working now. And that's unfortunate. I'm going to have to contact the author to figure out why it suddenly stopped working. Okay. In any case, we have this. And so this is how you do shake. I'll highlight the traditional way. You put a translation and you can use the cycle on this and it shakes it. And I found the Y translation to be too much, so let's reduce that a bit. And we have a slightly reduced shake. And this looks like more of the alarm type shake where you have an object that's shaking more left and right than up and down. And, you know, this is fine for shaking. You could actually add a rotation to this as well, a very subtle rotation. And we'll do it the exact same way because we want to cycle it again. UX name equals shake rotate. And we'll, just, we'll cycle the degrees. And this should be very subtle. And you should always start very subtle with the animations. Um, I'm probably overdoing it even just to show the effect because we have to see something. But the user will appreciate that on the mobile device. It's just subtle things, just to make enough for the interface to look alive. And now, how do we want to? Yeah, I don't know. Let's just enter another some weird number, so it has a cycle that is slightly off. Okay. And so now that's getting a little bit crazy. <laughs> And I'm going to put the rotation in the other order. And this is one of these weird things you have to watch. I think I have it in the wrong order. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a bit better. You have to watch when using when setting it up this way with the rotation and translation. The order here actually matters. It does it in this order. And this, if you know a little bit of matrix math, it'll explain why this happens. If you don't care to know much about matrix math and something just looks a little odd, just try changing the order. There's not so many of them that you have to worry about too much. <clears throat> if you start combining them, maybe, but we don't combine that often. And so now our little shaking one actually looks like it shakes. And this one's actually, this is, this is quite a crazy shake. So I'm actually going to remove the rotation because the rotation is kind of excessive here, I find. I, I, I just want a simple shaking app. And you can do this to draw somebody's attention to something on uh, on the device. Hey, like, look here, shake. There's something here. Look over me. I'm happening. And you can change the duration here. Um, or you can turn this on and off. You can make this a while true instead, a while condition. And then you can make it shake based on some late condition. Maybe it's updating. Maybe there's some true value. And you just make it shake until somebody turns it off again. That's another option. Um, for now, I'll just leave it like this. Again, just send me comments if you want to see how you do that other option. So now we have a couple of them. We have a bounce, and we have a shake. And what else can we do? We have a, uh, what's a very common one? What do I call this episode again? Um, I forgot what I call this. There's one more, because that's a rattle meme. We're a rattle shake. Bounce. 
Now we had pulse as well. You notice how pulse is also on the line now as well. Because we set the anchor down there, pulse goes below the line, so it's no longer centered. It's at the line. So pulse works, and what else could we do? We could roll something, I guess. Let's try rolling. This one was good because we have the anchor point here. We can let it tip upside down and swing back and forth a bit. And let's see if we do that. Let's see if we can make it swing. Swing. And we'll make another one. Swing. Now what is a swing? Well, we just want to rotate it. Very exciting. Rotate degrees equals, let's make it just do 180 for now. Duration equals 0 0.5. So you can see the basic effect. So a swing is, that's a swing. And we have the anchor. Again, this depends on the anchor. If the anchor was in the middle, it wouldn't actually do that. So. This is only so much fun on its own. Let's put some keyframes in here. Keyframe, I'm gonna say degrees Z, because it's rotating on the Z axis. Um, let me check this first. I think it works without Z as well. We'll start at zero, time equals zero. Keyframe degrees Z equals, so I'm gonna overshoot a bit this time, 210. Time delta equals one. Keyframe, and it's gonna make it go back and forth a few times. Goes back down to 45, time delta equals one. Let's do steps of one. Keyframe, degree set equals 110, time delta equals one. Keyframe, degree set equals 90, time delta equals one. And then it's going to immediately start bouncing back. And that's fine. Let's remove this. And I'm going to jump to the interpolation and be right away as smooth. Now you may be thinking, well, why is the default not smooth? Why, why is the default linear? And when you're doing pseudo-realistic animation, animations, typically you do want smooth. But when doing the typical UI animation, shifting things around using keyframes, very, very often you want linear. And for us, it was a choice. What will be least surprising? And in terms of actual understanding what the code's doing, linear seems least surprising. Even though smooth, if you're trying to do pseudo realism or like pseudo physics, does seem more realistic. The default of linear actually makes more sense. Just when I'm doing an animation demo like this, probably not. It looks a bit weird. Okay. Now I actually made a mistake here. I wanted to swing 180 around. And so 210 would overdo it. So actually I want to even go further there, like 245 and not down to 45. I wanted to do like 135. Let's do 130. 135 is where I wanted it. Because the bottom one is 180. So this should be 110. I actually meant plus 90, 200. And this was 180. Okay. Now let's see what happens when it swings. Then it springs back right away. Okay. And that's the typical swing we want to do. It's a basic swing. And we probably want to extend the end here because it's not... Again, we're doing pseudo-realism here. And let's just stick a few more in. Another keyframe. So make this one overextend again. Back to 175 degrees Z equals 182. Z equals 180. So this will make it slowly bounce around the end there. Very slowly make it bounce. Like it's resting into position. But the moment it's done, it's immediately going to start swinging all the way back. 
Okay, and we have to get back to the start position somehow. I addressed this in one of the other issues about rest-based animation that it always comes back. Um, it's, excuse me, just for a second, there's some post person at the door, I think. Just a second. Okay, taking care of the door demon, let's go back to swinging. Um, and so yeah, we had the swing, and, and we have a pseudo swing here. And if you had, if we had a visual tool, and this is, I can't promise such a thing, in the long term, when we have visual tools, the long term goal is obviously to set up these keyframe things in a visual editor, because it's, I mean, coming these values into the one is only so much fun, and, and it works, but we may want to do that. But the problem with the swing is it comes down like this, this object's actually upside down now, which is what we wanted, but we don't really see that. So let's put something in here so we can actually see that it's upside down. What do we want to put in here? Um, well, let's put a smiley in there. I got to copy these from somewhere, so let's see. Let's get a list of emoji. What do we want in there? This is an actual emoji. Oh, that's not an emoji. Let's just find one that's fun. Some of these must be. Do we have a character? Unicode ones. Anything anything that'll look fun? How about an eggplant? Anybody really likes an eggplant? Good. <laughs> We're gonna put an eggplant in there. For the fun of it. This, this is always really weird when you start editing with the emoji in them. And let's give it a big font size of I don't know, just say 30. It'll fit for now. Alignment equals center. And then we can at least see that it's going upside down. So now we have an eggplant in there. And so when you swing, you can better see that it's actually going upside down. And then when it comes back up, it'll slowly come back up. It's building momentum. The shaking, we also have a shaking eggplant now. And the bouncing should do the whole thing. The, the e translations apply to the whole graphics, so the, you can actually see the eggplant squish. I should put this on earlier. Eggplants are more fun than a blue box. And we can call this our eggplant demo with them. Okay, and so again, this swing, we make it come down and slowly easy. And you notice, because we're using smoothing interpolation of Bezier curve, you can get away with really hard transitions because it just smooths them out. Um, I should probably make a demo one time. Maybe not for the graphics people out there, but for the more people that are more inclined to like really want to dig deep into the Bezier curves, I can show you exactly what these curves are doing. And, but for the graphics people, you probably actually know this better than most programmers. I mean, those little charts you have in your illustration programs, they do an excellent job of explaining how Bezier's work, even if you're not aware of the fact that you're manipulating a one-dimensional Bezier curve. Um, but maybe I should make a program that demos that. Now we should be able to shake this at the same time and bounce it. Bouncing is going to get weird, right? Bouncing. Kind of, you start combining everything, it does weird things. <laughs> the goal here, when everything's combined, is it does actually work. Okay, now go back to start. Come on, go back. And you know, so the swing. Maybe, maybe this could, this we didn't want this much, this too much here. We have all these time deltas, and I'm going to start reducing them down at the end. Just make it a little bit faster, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.5. Uh, and I'm not sure what else we can do with this one, but let's make it hook down and pull it back up because we don't want it just, we don't like the swinging back effect. So it's a bit faster now. It goes a bit too slow though. So, at the end I don't like the swinging back. I'd rather have it pull up and then flip over. And how are we going to do this? How are we going to make a pull up? Unfortunately, I'm going to have to manually modify these times. Move y equals minus 1. And now we're going to do relative to the size, because it's upside down. And we're going to delay this to be at 
Can anybody? I'm gonna go back to. Uh, let's just make these all 0 0.5 so they're easy to add. That gives us 4.5. Again, a nice visual tool here would be great. And this will get us halfway. This mings it up, and then we can make it sort of spin around because it's still upside down. I think. Uh, there's an ordering issue here. We have to see what happens. Oh, I forgot to put a duration. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> duration. Let's take a go up one and see what happens there. And we pull it up one. Okay. But now... Um, Can I rip this in half? Hmm. I have not tried this before. Let's do scale is minus one. Delay equals 5.5. Duration equals one. And now this gets it back to its original position. You may not believe me on this. So instead of doing a pulse, we can do a pulse forward on the swing. Okay, but I did the I did the wrong inversion. So we have to scale and rotate. So it's upside down and facing the wrong way. Um so how do we want to do is it scaling upside down and facing the wrong way and so we could flip but we could do the same thing scale x and scale y. Let's see what happens with that. This is just playing around, just to see how we can combine things and make little timelines of these things. Oopala. So that moves it off somewhere else. And this is going to be a bit tricky with this anchor. So I don't know how else we can do that. Um, hmm. How can I actually do that? How can I get that working? Because the anchor's off at that point. Well, we can change the anchor. And that's going to be the silliest thing you can imagine, is right after this move, we can change, oh, what key does that do? Give this thing a name. Let's call it the box. And put it back to the middle temporarily. Delay equals 5.5. Ah, this might do funny things. I'm actually pushing my luck here, um, but let's see what happens. No, it's going to go up. And this is because the scaling, the second scaling here, it's because we have the anchor at the bottom, the scaling is going to flip it over again because it's way up there. Is there any way I can actually do that very quickly? Probably not. So anybody have any ideas on how we can get that to flip back nicely? I know what I wanted to do, but I can't necessarily do it the same way because the scaling of the Y is not going to work because we have the anchor at the bottom. And What we can do, and there's actually ways to layer this, is we really just need the text to go around. And it can have its own. Right now, everything's defaulting to the box, but we could actually do it that way. Y equals minus 1, target equals text, delay equals 5.5, .5, duration equals 1. Let's see if that works. There we go. That actually works. Do we actually want to do it in one or do you want to do two steps? And so now we have full animation. It swings and hangs. It's pulled back up. It flips over and the text is pulled over too. 
you actually may want to put this one for expect. Let's put this one slightly after it. Just see what happens. Just so we can see all the steps very clearly on this. So this hangs down. It comes back up. Flip it. And then we flip the eggplant as well. So now we have a swinging eggplant that flips around. And because I'm using just pulse forward, and this is all trickery. You notice these scales, when I've rotated it down, applied this movement, so I've, I've rotated it, it's sticking at 180 degrees now. It's moved up one relative to the size, which pulls it back up. Then it's scaled the X to inverted and it's scaled to Y. All the things applied together make it look exactly the same as a start, which is why pulse forward works. Pulse forward then says when this is done, all of it just goes away. But since it's in the exact same position, you don't notice it's all gone away. But this probably makes it not combine well with the other ones at the same time. It's getting relatively complex. But the other ones on their own still apply just fine. We bounce, we can shake a bit, and we can swing. Okay, um, is there any other short one we could possibly do right now? Um, like a common one? We went too long here. What else do we have? Um, the other thing is I wanted to make these customizable in this app, but I'll do some of that offline. I just want to show the animations here. What other animation do we typically want to do? Uh, bounce we have. Things bounce. Shake is common. That's a bit hefty, the shake there, but that's okay. We can make it slide to the left and right a little bit, but that's not so much fun. I can't think of another really fun one to do right now. Um... What else could we do? I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, maybe I'll the right one down. Let's just make it slide to the right or left. It's not as much fun. Or we can say that we can have this bounce. We can make it bounce to the right. Let's extend this one. We'll say jump. Call it jump. And let's make it bounce to the right a bit. We can do this. Uh, whoops. Bounce right, and I'll copy and paste the same ones here. Where's bounce? Here it is. Get rid of the to do, I already have it on the top. Bounce, move moves it up and down, and when does it start moving? When it's going up. But now we're actually going to make it move to the left as well. X equals zero, still at zero. X equals 50. And keep it at 50. This is going, to revire, is going to quickly shift back to the side. So let's make it slide back to the starting point. X equals zero time delta equals make it slowly slide back so it has so it doesn't just end up in the middle of nowhere and oops I made an error keyframe I made the same error <clears throat> don't apparently want to type a capital K let's see if this actually does something useful okay it didn't have a chance to come down first it didn't make it all the way down, which makes sense. We should have kept going. Because these are keyframes, and so it doesn't actually hit zero until we're here. So this should have been 100. It should have kept going. But that actually looked like it was way too far. So let's put it down to 25. Hey, that's still not very convincing. It's still coming back too early. Why is that? What do we have here? We have... Hmm... It's jumping over the right, but what do I have wrong with the interpolation here? Back time delta is 1. You know, it's because of the smoothing. It does this weird curve. I think this is two frame. We need to make a stickier frame here, and I'll show. I just let it sit here for a while, really long, and then see if that fixes it, first of all.
It does, but it seems to hit a wall on the side. It seems to hit the bottom. Ah, again, that's why. I didn't need to put 25, I made it put 50. Okay, it seems to get stuck in the middle though, which is kind of annoying. Right? And this is because we're combining multiple keyframes together here. And these are sharing the same smoothing. Now this may be very hard to sort of visualize, but because these are sharing the same smoothing, they can actually interact. They shouldn't, they're linear, they shouldn't interfere with each other, but the timings very well could be. And because we have two different timings here, let's instead move the X into a different set on its own. So I'm going to take this out of here. And you can do this, you can have multiple moves. And let's just, just do Y in this one. In which case we don't need the end. And we're going to start at x at 0, or at time delta 0 0.7. And we're just going to specify the end coordinate. And this should also be a time of 0 0.7. We just specify it all for once. And then we'll leave it there for a while and then go back to the start. And so we should be able to combine these without an issue. All right. And so that bounces it right and then shifts back slowly to the left. And that's a nice fun little hop off to the right. Now, we can make it squish again on the bottom, maybe. Maybe should it squish a little bit? It'd be look better, but <laughs> that's again, we're copying the scaling thing again. So we'll just leave it there for that. And it hops off to the right. What you could also do at this point is we can do a skew. We can skew this. There's one problem with the skew, but I'll let you know in a second. We want to do uh, probably y degrees. Degrees y equals. I'm just going to overdo it so you can see the effect first. And this was actually supposed to start at degrees y equals 0 time delta equals 0 0.7. And actually, we don't want to do it and starts coming back, so that's 2.4. For one, 0 0.5 seconds, it goes there. It's very random. Hopefully, we see the effect first of all. I might have skewed it in the wrong direction. Yeah, so it has to be degrees x. And this final time delta, let's reduce this a little bit. This is 2.4. That's correct in 0 0.5. And we've overdone it. Let's see what happens. Okay. And that was the idea. You see it's skewing off to the right and sliding that way too. And it just kind of abruptly ends as well. So we have to let that slowly come back as well. And degrees x equals 0, time delta. When should this end? It should end by the time the x actually gets back there. So if we say 0 0.5 here, the other one has to be a bit longer. So let's make this one 0 0.25 and this 0 0.25. So this is when they, so it lines up, so it looks like it's fake acceleration. Right? And so we have that, it bounces. And we don't need this time delta at the end. Let's just let it sit there not very long. Um, Let's set it in only half a second. Then we can drop this down half a second as well. And 45 is probably too much, so let's go to 35. And see what happens when it bounces over. And then it slides back. Okay, so now we have the full cycle. We have a bouncer. The normal bounce, actually I think it looks a little bit more normal. Bounce right is a little bit weird. I can't actually think of a good situation where you'd want to bounce right the UI, except for maybe an, an entering animation, right? You may actually want to have it enter that way. When new objects come into the screen, you can make them bounce in. That's a reasonable way to do it. And we can make it shake and bounce at the same time. So the note I wanted to say about skew, this is supported in our graphics back end, but 
I believe neither Android nor iOS actually support this translation. It's uh, or this transformation. They don't, or maybe they they only use a, a two by three matrix. Um, one of them does. So this may not work in native mode. Certainly in one of the devices, it won't work. Your animation will still work. It just drops the skew, which is kind of convenient. I mean, if the skew doesn't work, you'll still get the rest of this. It's just without the skew. So without, if you're, I think it's iOS only supports the one. So if you're on iOS, this will actually look like more like this. Right. And by iOS, I mean native mode. If you're in the graphics mode, which is currently the default, it'll look exactly the same because they look exactly the same everywhere. Okay. Um, let's look at the ones we have again, just see where we are. So we had mounts. Bounce was a series of scales and moves with keyframes. And that was just the bouncing up. And the squishing was just two scales. And you notice the actual, the eggplant inside actually changes the side of the scale, not just the box. These are actual graphical scalings. And it should also work on the devices. They, they handle scaling. Um, now, bounce right, we just did a lot of, so we know how that works. We just added a move and we added a skew to it. And the shake, the shake does another trick, is the one we did, where a shake. Shake, we used a translation that was out of line, out in the timeline, and then we used cycle. And cycle quickly changes things back and forth, and we gave it a whole duration, so duration of one second. And oddly, this plays backwards and forwards, so it's actually two seconds long. But the cycles know how to adjust themselves, so they'll, they always get back to the right place. Oops. And shaking is just really quickly moving it in various locations. And then we had a swing, which is just some random combination of things to make it look like it fell below the surface. And then it's pulled back up like this. And we rotate them back. And the fact that it's in back in the same position is a trickery. We got it back there and then just told it to cancel it using a pulse forward. Um, and we use an eggplant. You can use whatever emoji you want. You can put whatever you want in there. And this is interesting. I wonder if there's a Unicode standard. The eggplant in my text editor is facing the different way than the one on the screen. Um, so it's unfortunate that Unicode doesn't say which way the eggplant has to be facing. So we don't have left and right eggplants, but I guess that's fine. <laughs> um, sorry. That was all I wanted to show today. I want to show a few of these techniques. And let me read again what we want to do with this program is I want to have a little test bed of a bunch of little common ones. And I had a few written down and I kind of lost the sheet. I'm very sorry. But I knew Shake was on it. That's one of the common ones. And Bounce is on there. And I have these other techniques just to show how they're done. But the goal of this program will be that we have, this should scroll up. We, we have a bunch of little things that you can play with and you can look this program and right now you can look at the source code and see how it's done. But what I'd like to have is actual button in this program which pops up a button showing you the source code that you can just copy and paste it and you can configure these things. And nice loud garbage truck outside. It's coming to pick up my eggplant. Doesn't like us abusing it. Okay. Um, and so yeah, this program, I'll keep developing it and I'll do this in every show. That Every time I have a new technique, I'll come and show you how to do it and it'll be good. And anything I do offline in terms of the, the bottom part, I'll do a de separate show for, I won't call it animation, how we can get this to be less repetition and down here in this code because it's always, it's very similar right now. And maybe put a few configuration options like different colors, the line on and off and how to deal with the anchor. Anchor is something in terms of features I've wanted to deal with a long time is one thing we don't deal with is we don't deal with changing the anchors dynamically very well but we shouldn't need it here anyways these individual scalings and move these transformations should be able to specify their own anchoring and I mean again with the anchoring the scaling is, is where is it scaling from and this was important for the bounce because we need to bounce the scale from the line so I can show you quickly again what happens if you don't have the anchoring on here. It's centered in the middle and you notice the bounce doesn't really have that effect. It doesn't squish around the line. It just squishes wherever. And the swing is just going to do something weird. 
It's not going to do what we expect. All right, so this is that's the importance of the anchoring is to get the real things happening in the right location. But these should be actually on these timelines themselves, and that's something we'll fix in a future version. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any particular effect you'd like to do, please send me a link. Um, you can do it on Twitter, or you can do it <coughs> on our community Slack. You just send to me at Mortaray, I believe is my name. You can also subscribe to me on Twitch and just say what you want, which animation you have, if you've seen one somewhere, like simple ones. And then I'll try to implement them. I've noticed doing this show, there are some features, very small ones that we're missing that will make this a lot easier. And when I have the time in between fighting other defects, um, I might just add some of these some of these minor features, some very minor things might make it a little easier to can these animations together and get this working. But for now, I think it works well. I think we got some basic ones. And it's a good starting point for us to move forward. I'll remove the crud after. But again, let's just look at them once more. We have a bounce. Some bounce. We can also bounce it over to the right and then have it shift back to the left. We can make it shake or we can make it swing. All right, so I hope you enjoyed my show. And this can be done in Fuse, the version that we have right now. I didn't use anything new. Be sure to subscribe to my Twitch channel if you like this video and like to watch again in the future. If you're watching on YouTube, then I'll subscribe there. And I'll keep publishing all the videos there. And again, follow me on Twitter so you know when these are being posted and any other questions you may have about this for computers or if you're interested in programming languages in general or UI. Follow me, let me know anyway. And I'm glad you watched and I hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you next time.